Well, folks, this is a very special day for me. I mean that most sincerely because I am now introducing you to an original. This is Bill Boggs. This is my father who came up from Philadelphia to be with us today to help us uh, give you a little advanced preview of Father's Day. Thanks for coming, Dad. Hi, Bill. I just arrived by train. Thank you. Thank you. I for feel a little sluggish. Uh, I'm always uh, accustomed to doing some exercises. Do you mind if I do a few push-ups and so forth? Well, you, mean, you want to do them now? I mean, you know, just starting yeah, this show. Yeah, that's all right. I don't... If you say so, Dad, okay. it's okay. okay. Right. I mean, I never cross okay, the big well. man himself. Okay, Dad, now, what are you going to do? Are oh, your push-ups. Push-ups. See, all my life, my father has been taking good care of himself. Uh, he used to be president of the World Marathon Swimmers Association. He's always set a very good example of physical fitness. And at age 73, I think you'll find that he can touch his toes pretty easily. As a matter of fact, I think he can touch his toes easier than I can. Is that your knuckles that you were just putting on the floor, Dad? That's a knuckle. What does that, and your palms are down there now too? That's right. Touching them on the floor. See, he can do this all day. How do you feel now? A little better? Great. All right, good. Here, I'll give you the coat. Right. Because listen, we have a very special, another father I want you to meet. Yeah. You remember back uh, in Philadelphia on Walker Street when Eisenhower was running and you were the local committee man and you were supporting Ike and we had the big picture of Ike in the window? That's right. As the last Republican you supported, by the way, That's right? That's right. You became a Democrat, Democratic That's right. committee man Later after that. On. Well, Sheila Rab Weidenfeld is here with her dad, uh, Max Rab, who worked for President Eisenhower. Would you like to meet him? That's real nice. I'd be happy. Let's go. Okay. Happy. Sheila, how do you feel having your dad with you today? With your father. Don't you do exercises together? Well, we occasionally do them together. My, Max, my this father? is Bill. Well, well, very nice to see you. And you've met you. Sheila before. We walk together. Oh, yes, we yeah. don't do strenuous things I like that. I want to tell you, together. I was very much impressed with the fact that you were with Eisenhower in the past, but even more impressed by the fact that you did exercises, uh, something I just could not, uh, cannot do, and, <laughs> and I think will not do. When, once I get down on the floor, it's hard for me to get up. <laughs> you just fall, fall asleep when you're on the floor, huh? Right. You know, I, I was wondering if we could talk about just for a minute, you know, with Father's Day coming up this weekend. And I really, I'd never asked my father this question. What, what for you, being a father, were the happiest times? Now at age 73, when you look back on raising me and my sister Barbara, what, what are the times you remember most fondly? Well. Uh, Bill, I used to teach uh, physical education at the University of Pennsylvania, and uh, the course being around young men all my life, I, I, I thought it would be a highlight in my life if uh, you, in uh, graduating high school, would attend the University of Pennsylvania, and uh, it, uh, I was very happy that that all took place. Well, that's, uh, that's you nice. did graduate from Penn and graduate from the School of Communications, and uh, that's was the highlight of my well, life. That's good. Um, well, in terms of me. My father has four children. I don't know if there's any special highlight. I've oh, yes. never asked I you think, that before either. I think the fact that uh, you have remained all good friends and that it is a very strong family relationship. Family may be an outmoded t approach to life nowadays, but believe me, it, was, it has been a tremendous source of pleasure for me to see that my children have worked together and have come along so well. well it's been a lot of strength for me too. Ma Max, if you could have lived at another time and raised a family at another time in history, when might that have been? I've, o I've thought about that frequently. I would say about 1760. And I'd like to have lived in the colonial period and lived in uh, New York or particularly in Massachusetts or New England because I think the, uh, the standards, the way of living must have been very, very interesting to meet the world with a challenge that was just as great as any challenge today, but meet it at least with hope. How about you, Dad? Gentlemen, stole my thunder. <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved to live back in the days of the pioneers because uh, I think pioneer in our country was, uh, was really great. The men, they, they carried their sidearms. They had to fight for what was worthwhile. If one part of the, the town was corrupt, they still had their churches, they still had their religion, and they brought their children up around in a Christian atmosphere. 
And they, 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 our pioneer fathers really built a country that we, every American should be real proud of. And they are the days that I would like You would have been out there splitting the logs, yes, right? Building the it. barns and things like that. Yes, I would have loved And it. doing the exercises. Doing the exercises. Well, he, he would have done it naturally then, I would think. Well, yeah. on a personal level, I must ask because, I mean, that, your father is so on top of physical fitness. Did you make Bill do these things every single morning? Well, no, I wouldn't. Uh, maybe no? I was just a good example for Bill. Absolutely. And so you just did that? Absolutely. Which is why he jogs five a good miles example. a day yeah. every morning. I mean, really, my father's going to be 74 years old, and I think he's a picture of health. Fantastic. I really do, and I'm proud of it, and I, I hope that I, my body will stay as in, in as good shape as his. I, I want to share something with you. When I was thinking about this, because, you know, it's, a, it's kind of a, a special emotional thing for me, being with the viewers, you know, every day and, and having my father on. I, I mean that. I'd like to share with you um, my, some of my earliest memories of my father. And they come in the form of pictures, which I have up, Dad, from Philadelphia. We'll put the pictures on. These are things, I, when I was four and five years old, I would look at these pictures and my father would tell me the stories. Now, there's my father surrounded by women. Where was this, Dad? Well, that was taken at the Elks Club in Philadelphia. And uh, that happens to be my uh, girls' swimming team. And uh, we had regular competition in, in Philadelphia. We had interstates, uh, an interstate swimming league, both girls' team and boys' team. And this is, of course, before you were married. This is uh, when you were in your 20s and, and early 30s and teens. Right? Oh, yes. Did your yes, mother make your team? Uh, well, how was, how was mother as a swimmer? Uh, well, your mother was a side stroke swimmer, Billy. <laughs> uh, the it's, old side stroke. It's but a good one. She's mm -hmm. out there laughing. Let's take a look at the at the next picture. Now, what's this? This is one of my father's publicity shots. He's on the right. And what are you doing with these four women? Well, I took a young lady up to Canada the second year. Her name was Gladys Lathbury. And uh, I had a nice company deliver uh, about uh, 10 300-pound kegs of ice. And uh, we would use them, around the, use them around the pool before they would melt down. The girls would like to do their exercises on them, their crawl Stay stroke, cool the, and the arm motion, and the leg kick, and so forth. That's good. That was a good, also a good, you had an eye for publicity even then. Well, it was a publicity I think I inherited sport. that, too, as a matter sure. of fact. <laughs> what do we have next? Well, that was my own idea of putting a rope uh, and a piece of canvas around a, uh, a novice swimmer and giving them a little support in the deep water. I always believed in getting them into the deep water and allowing them to, to relax because if the, if the body is relaxed, uh, the water will, uh, you mean, naturally hold you. And this was taken at Crystal Pool? No, this was taken at the uh, Where's Pool in, in Summers, and that's a different pool altogether. Oh, I see. Yeah. I think we have one more shot here, which, uh, one or two, two more. This, this one looks like something out of a strange well, foreign <coughs> film. That happens to be Margaret Raver, the deceased Margaret Raver, who in 1930, one, I took up to Canada, won the, the, win, the, uh, the women's 10-mile professional swim. She's wearing a coat of grease of, of lanolin, a little mixture of graphite, olive oil, and wintergreen. And that's before lanolin, lanolin was ever used for cosmetics by women. And you invented this uh, substance, right? And you were her well, coach. Uh, yes, yes. It was my own concoction. Well, it looked very comfortable, as a matter of fact. One, one, last, one last photograph. This is my father at about my age uh, that I am right now, I guess. Wouldn't you say so, Dad, in your, in your 30s? Yes. Okay. They want us to get together for a, a head show here. You, see. you think we look alike? <laughs> no, I don't think so right now. I do. I, I saw the resemblance immediately. Did you? Absolutely. Right or, yeah, immediately. I look like my father. We're the same height. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I got a good father. I just want to say that. I've got oh, a good absolutely. Father. Take the a best. minute and tell us what you were doing with the President Eisenhower. Well, I was Secretary of the Cabinet with President Eisenhower, and uh, it was a wonderful seven or eight years, and I certainly enjoyed that period. Um, one of the interesting things, though, that I do want to tell you about is that Sheila, uh, when I was leaving the White House, uh, I told her to sit in the president's chair because there is a legend that if you sit in that chair and make a wish, that wish will come true. She did that, and then nothing was to be said about it. And years later, 
she, uh, she told us what the wish was when she once again was in the White House with Mrs. Ford as her press secretary. And she said at that time, the wish I made was that I would come back to the White House. Uh, so you're, not allowed to tell a, you're not allowed to tell the wish unless that wish comes true, and then you can reveal your well, wish. Well, then, when, when you left the White House last time after leaving Mrs. Ford, <laughs> did you sit in the chair again and oh, make another course. wish? I, I took my husband, Jack Ford, went there. <laughs> a lot of wishes, I took huh? all my friends. But yes. you can't tell the, what the wish tell. is or else it, it spoils. So mm -hmm. goes the legend. I see. Well, this has been fun. I guess we, we're really conveying a, a Father's Day wish to everybody now, um, a couple days in advance. That is, think a good thought about your father. Oh, not just father. on Father's Day. Every day of the year.